I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam podcast. Joining me today in the CEO Swim series is a man with deep, deep roots in the sport. Chlorine runs in his veins. He is the founder and CEO of Nulo Pet Food, the number one pet specialty brand in the United States, Michael Landa. Hey, Mel. How are you? Did I get that right? You did. Um, number one pet specialty, number one fastest growing pet specialty brand. I knew I would screw it up, and that's why I. I we we're not so we're not yet the biggest, so I don't know if people could interpret that as like number one being where the we are the number one in a lot of retailers, but overall we're not the highest volume, but we're definitely we're the fastest growing by two times. So. Full dis full disclosure. We practiced that before I started, and, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just say this in, in more full disclosure. Swim Swam is an Austin-based company. Nulo is an Austin-based company. And it, if you live in Austin, it's kind of hard to keep up with Michael because it's, he's, he's kind of a star here locally, especially if you are into pets. Do, do you feel that personally? I mean, that, that's my experience, you know, sort of living in Austin, Texas and breathing the Austin oxygen. Well, it's definitely a huge uh, pet community. Um, you know, everywhere you go in Austin, like Town Lake and everything, you just see people with, out with their dogs. And um, you always hear stories and see photos of people with their cats and dogs on their phones. I mean, it's just one of those cities where, you know, pets are just um, a huge part of the family. The, um, so I have a, a, my dog is, I have three rescues, Tucker, um, Ruby, our, our two dogs, and then we have Honey Badger. And Honey Badger <laughs> is, was, was so, she got to be so big, her, her belly was nearly dragging the ground. And she's my, my cat, she's, I'm her person, she lays on me. Uh, so I get my pet food at Tomlinson's. And, uh, and I didn't, I didn't know about Nulo until I'd spoken with our buddy, Aaron Pearsall, who's an Olympic icon. And, and he told me about Nulo and, and I, anyway, so anyway, we've been on Nulo ever since. And I can tell you this, Honey Badger has lost weight. She's, she's, um, she's in much better shape. And I wasn't, I didn't really understand why. And at Tomlinson's, they told me, they said, look, it's the probiotic. I don't mean to get so into pet food immediately, but it's had to do it because I'm so excited and I really love probiotics. And uh, so I want you to explain why that works. Yeah, no, the probiotics are a great uh, addition of the formulas, but you know, probiotics are really great for digestive health, for immune health, all those great things. And the, and the probiotic that Nulo uses in our foods is it's actually a spore based probiotic. So um, it's a patented version of a strain that's used in a lot of human foods. So you'll notice um uh, a Ganeden BC30 logo. And, and, and really the spore-based nature of the probiotic means that for a pet food application, it's able to survive the heat of cooking of the food that has to happen prior to it going into the bag. So, um, you know, a lot of companies, most companies, in fact, use a lower cost version, which they either put in the mix before or they spray on after cooking when during the drying period. And, you know, you have to remember, probiotics are living organisms, so they really don't survive that process. Um, having the spore-based, it actually just responds to a pH change. So when it, when it senses that it's got the pH level in the lower intestine, it kind of flourishes at that point, and it becomes viable in the, in the pet's gut, actually, where, where it's needed most. So, um, so the probiotic is a huge feature of our food. But, you know, in terms of the weight, I mean, I, we were, we're a high, high meat, low carb platform, which is really important to think about, you know, human food. And if we ate fast food every day versus, you know, chicken breast and something much more lean, um, that's hopefully why Honey Badger, between the, the high meat and the low carb and the probiotic, that's, that's really what Nulo is known for. Tomlinson's is, uh, we really trust Tomlinson's and when they, when they, they came in with this endorsement and the explanation, it wasn't quite this detailed, but I, <laughs> we appreciate the explanation. I think, you know, a lot, it, it, let's, so let, let's just tell everybody how, how we're going to do this, this podcast today. Let's, we're going to talk background, 
Then we're going to talk about really just, you know, your, your, your life as an entrepreneur. Then we'll mm -hmm. get into your tentacles into the sport of swimming and all other sports because it, frankly, it's kind of head spinning. You, you guys are everywhere. So let's, let's, let's start with, with chapter one and we'll work backwards. You are Sounds a master good. swimmer. You're a master swimmer. You are rolling wood masters and rolling wood masters is like the coolest masters program <laughs> for the cool people in Austin because in the head coach is five time Olympic medalist, Ian Crocker. And uh, so I, it, during COVID, have you, have you guys been able to work out? What's, what's the deal? Yeah, we have. It's, um, you know, they've been sticking to a schedule. So early on, like when they did reopen the pool, um, you know, you, you very much, we had to sign up and it was a lot more constrained in terms of the number of folks. We were, we only had one person at each end. And um, so, you know, in our case, we could only have 12 people per workout and, you know, it's loosened up a little bit, but it's pretty much still like every week we have to go and sign. It's like, you know, soul cycle. We got we to gotta get our spin class and uh, we got to sign up for each, each and every workout. So in there, you know, when you get there, you got to wear a mask and, you know, adhere to all those kind of pro safety protocols on the deck. So, you know, fortunately, um, it's all, it's all gone without a hitch and it allowed us to get back in the water a few months ago, which has been amazing. Is, is, Crocker, uh, is Crocker tough? You know, he's, I don't, I don't see him as, as much as tough as like really informative. I mean, a guy like, I mean, I'm not going to say how old I am. I mean, I'm, I might be past 50, but, um, but I will say like, I, I've learned some things from Ian and he tells them in a way that make a lot of sense. So, um, you know, I think that my push-offs, my underwaters, like uh, my arm positions, I think all those things have gotten better in my 50s as a result of Ian. So um, I'm really lucky to be uh, training under him. We have to, uh, you know what, I've got some B-roll footage of you. Oh, and uh, Coleman, <laughs> you're going to have to put, you're going to have to drop some, some B-roll footage of Michael in the edit just to let people see what's going on because baby, you got a nice smooth stroke. It, it's like I a hot knife through that. butter. It looks good. <laughs> and that, that goes, but so let's go back to him because your roots are deep. Tell me about your first, you know, what's that thumbnail in your brain, that first memory in swimming oh, at, at an early age? Yeah, it's, you know, it was a while ago, but it was, uh, I started swimming right before I turned seven. And um, I guess my most vivid, I, I, I can still remember this like it was a week ago, but it was my very first swim meet. Um, and, you know, they put me in the four by 25 freestyle relay uh, for, I was eight and unders. And um, they put me third because the guy who was going four was the current record holder on the team. And, um, you know, but, I think everybody got a real sense at that very first swim meet, how much I love to win. Cause when I got to the wall after my third lap, I decided to do a flip term and, and keep going, you know? And what I did is I swam right over Patrick and uh, who was in my lane and I beat both Patrick and the anchor next to me. And I, and I won the race actually, but not really cause we actually got disqualified. So, but that's uh, I'll never forget that. But it's like that, it's that moment where you just realize how much you love to win and hate to lose. It's, uh, we're going to get into this later, but it's of, of all the folks in the CEO swim series that I wanted to talk to, I, I put you ladder on the list because I kind of felt like I was going to get, I've learned something in each one of these, but I, I, I let's just say I'm aware of who you are and your mindset and, and how swimming has influenced you as a CEO. But uh, it, where you really, I feel like you, you're, you're deep in the culture is when I think about your high school coach, Mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And you, and you did share your age in, in, in a sense. So you do come at a time in swimming history when we did really honest work. Can you talk about uh, the hard yeah, stuff? Yeah, um, absolutely. Like high school for me was, you know, I mean, it's, it was a pretty different time. I look back now and I think, God, how did I survive that? But, um, but I will say my, my high school age group coach um, was a guy named Mark Mickelson and I, Mark was, you know, he was so tough. I mean, the guy was really, really demanding. Um, but I, I had a ton of respect for the guy because, you know, he, he put in the work himself. He had qualified for Olympic trials in the fly. Um, he day in and day out would come in and demand excellence from all of us. Um, and, and would do like, and it wasn't just the pool. I mean, I, we would go to swim meets. Like I, I lived in Western Massachusetts and we would drive to meets at Harvard or, or Brown and, and Mark would drive me there and he would make me listen to 
you know, Bach and Schubert and all kinds of classical music because he, he said it would make me more worldly and a better guy. So, um, you know, it wasn't just in the pool, it was out of the pool. He just wanted to make sure I was a, a you know, a stand-up guy as well as, um, you know, that I was putting in the work. And he would always say like, you know, Michael, this is a hard-nosed sport. You got to get back in there and be tough. And, you know, he would, he would do things like, I remember every fall, um, he made us do a 10,000 meter for time and, and he would be, on the deck screaming and yelling out splits and waving his hands and you know all along like it was a race for him and it was it was very much a mental game and um you know he was really the master at kind of getting the best out of all of us and it was really really special time and you know a lot of work albeit i mean we were up at 4 20 every morning um during high school and we were in the gym by five and then it was in the pool and then it was in school and then it was back in the pool and then it was back to club pool and you know, there were, there were times I would put in 20, 25,000 meters a week. And um, I don't know that they still train like that, but boy, we, we used to log some miles in the pool. You know, I, in terms of, of digging into your background, I can't, I don't know if, I know you were a tough kid. I don't know if it was, was there, you know, if you had insecurities and it was masking that <laughs> or you were just, or this something that just, this was a part of your DNA and a gear. Um, you know, which, which is it? What, what, what is it? Who, who are you? That's a great question. I, I, I kind of think it's innate in people. I mean, I, you know, like that first race I swam that first relay, like, I think I just really had this will to win and, and um, you know, whether I'm swimming or at work or unfortunately driving in a car or whatever, it's, you know, I, I just, um, I love to win. And, and it's just something that, um, I seem to feel like I've always had, and, and I don't think it's really anything I'm, you know, feel like I'm making up for anything. It's, it's more as much as I just love it so much. Um, and so it drives me every day. It does feel good. And it does do nice things to your brain when you win. Uh, I, I think if you're into neuroplasticity and you're into, okay, let's, let's wire, let's wire this, this gray matter to be successful. If you, everyone doesn't have the benefit of, of, uh, of, of walking into your HQ and, and seeing your team and seeing the culture that you built or, uh, or, of, or, you know, understanding your reputation from being in the same city where you're based. I do. So I get it, but it's, uh, as, as CEO of, of, of new low and, and shepherding this, this company, um, you know, what's, how, how have you applied what you learned in the swimming culture to your leadership? Yeah, there's been, you know, there've been a ton of lessons along the way. And I'd say that, you know, swimming has, has taught me so many life lessons that you just simply can't get, you know, in a classroom, um, starting with, you know, I'm going to call it, I, I always like to say, call it showing up really. I mean, swimming taught me to really care about the effort that I'm putting into things. Um, you know, from the time I was that seven year old all the way till I graduated college, um, I probably missed, you know, less than less than five workouts in that entire time. Um, you know, I found that being present, you know, putting in the work, having pride in what you do, all of that really translates to success. I mean, it's something that, it's a recipe that I've learned works. And, um, and that's why I, I tend to do that over and over. And in my case, in my industry, for example, in the pet industry, um, you know, I, I honestly think a lot of companies just aren't showing up. Um, they have, what I think are average people who do average work and with average effort. And, you know, they don't demand excellence in the products that they're making for these pets and they spend their time making average product and products and trying to make them something better than they are. Um, and in this case, that's, you know, unfortunately the, um, you know, it's our pets who lose in that case. Um, I'd say, you know, so showing up is really important. I think, you know, it's at bats, it's showing up. I think the other thing I've learned that served me so well, um, in a leadership role is, is the, the ability to set goals, um, to, to beat them and then, and then aim higher to reset them. So that's something that Mark used to work a lot with me on in high school is, you know, we used to always have to sit down at the beginning of the season and we'd write down like all of my goals for the year. And, you know, he would call me out if he thought I was sandbagging any of the goals, but you know, it was, it was a time when, you know, I would really be encouraged to stretch to hit these goals, to reset them, to keep going. And it's, it's, you know, sometimes that's the way I operate at Nulo. And, and, you know, sometimes I think that, 
my team might think I'm being unrealistic or hard on them, but it's, you know, we always, since we started the company in 2011, it's, we've always hit the goals um, and we continue to stretch and it's, it's, we've achieved over 50% compound annual growth every year since 2014. Um, we're now the fastest growing specialty food in the, in the country. Um, so we've got a lot of reasons to point out why this works and, and we have quite a, you know, planning and goal setting session here uh, every year with the company. We're about to start it for 21 here in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, along the way, I, I got to say, I, I kind of also developed this, what I call a disdain for mediocrity. I, I think that um, I, I tend not to live in the gray. I don't compete in the gray. I don't run my company in the gray. I'm pretty black and white when it comes to that. And, you know, you either love to win and hate to lose, or you, you probably are best served getting out of my way because I, um, I really love to be around people who love to win. I mean, I, one of the guys I worked with for years um, here at Duo was Ricky Behrens. And, you know, he was our uh, finance manager and used to come in with the same attitude. And it's really fun to be around like-minded people that, that have that mindset and really understand, you know, what it takes to be um, successful and the kind of work you have to put in, but also, to, you know, the focus that it takes. And in addition to focus, I guess the last thing I'll touch on, Mel, is, is you know, this concept of perseverance. I mean, I, I talked about my workout schedule and all that. Um, you know, there, things aren't always going to go perfectly. Um, and there's always going to be, you know, competitors nipping at your heels, trying to take you down every day. And especially, you know, the more successful you come, the more folks will come at you. Um, and it's really, you know, it's really that makes the difference between winning and, and losing is really just um, persevering, having that willpower and that determination to keep moving and keep moving in the right direction. So I think all those things, you know, those are things that you learn in the pool or I learned in the pool. Um, but I've also worked with a lot of athletes outside of swimming and, you know, they all, it's sort of this fundamental corset of, you know, really striving, setting goals, persevering. I mean, those things will serve athletes really, really well as they transition into the corporate life. Let's put this in real world terms because you're, um, this is an industry that was set. This is an industry that's very concentrated and, uh, and you, you, you put your flag in the ground and, and frankly, you muscled in and I know they didn't like it because I actually, I never cared about any of this, but I started following this news. Can you describe your industry so that people understand? Yeah, it's, it, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, it's, um, I went to business school at UCLA and, and one of the first things they taught me there is you never enter an industry where four players control 80% of the market. Um, and that's exactly what I did in the case of pet food. And, and I did it, you know, I didn't go about it that way. I really sort of didn't intend to, to, to be where I am. I mean, it sort of happened organically, but, um, but our industry, the pet industry is, um, is in fact controlled by four, uh, four to five companies that, um, that control over 80 plus percent of the sales of pet food in the United States. A lot of, a lot of these little brands you don't realize are owned by one of these four or five. These are companies that make things, I won't name them, but they, you know, they make candy, they make chocolate, they make jelly, they make cereal and they make our pets food. So, um, you know, these are companies that are really good at cost optimizing foods and making them sound great. They also have very deep pockets and very big marketing budgets. So, um, you know, it's a David and Goliath story. Um, but I'd say for, you know, for a swimmer, it's, it's, you know, it's like entering the next age group. You graduate from 11 and 12, you're going to 13 and 14. Boy, now you've got a whole new set of, you know, competitors and you got you to gotta chase them down. You got to show up. You got to persevere. And that's kind of what we're doing here every day is we're staying really focused. Um, I, I kind of tell people it's bowl by bowl, right? We got to, we got to get the food to the bowl and we win. Um, so, uh, that's, you know, it served us well. We're, we're outpacing. I mean, our growth is certainly outpacing all of those companies and, uh, we're just going to keep at it and see where it takes us. Uh, swim, swam entered the market. There were three players and it was, um, and we, and it was sort of like, okay, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a competition. It's, uh, it's capitalism. And uh, what surprised me was what went on behind the scenes. Uh, I don't know if you experienced that. I know you're not going to name any names, but I was what the cold splash of water in the face was all of the small stuff that was really unfair. 
and right. that then it and it was hard to it was hard to to start over on some days and go okay this is this is the way it is. Did yeah, you I'll give you one hundred percent, um, and I'll give you one example again. I won't like I won't name the name, but we um, you know for years we are known as a, as the premium um, dog and cat kibble brand. However, we have a Canadian counterpart that you know, it sort of had been their domain for so many years. And, you know, they, they rather than take the stand of, you know, competing on nutrition and, and, and understanding like the dry solid protein matter that makes it to the bowl, which matters for carnivores, rather than compete on the science, you know, what they started to do was, was to go to distributors across the U S and say, look, if you carry new low, we'll drop you. And this is, mind you, this is a three or $400 million brand. So, um, so they do have some clout in the market. And so there were, you know, there were a number of years there where some of the, some of the best distributors that we wanted to partner with um, in certain geographies, we, we didn't, we couldn't because this particular brand was threatening because we were the one brand that they said if they carried, they would, they would drop them. And so, um, so those are, you know, those are challenges we face all the time. We also face we face challenges from brands saying there are things in their food like bison and it's actually water buffalo from India, like things like that, that you just, you don't want to know, but that go on. And, and I like to tell people like, I think integrity is like the new transparency. People, people always want to hear about like, Oh, you know, I want to, I want a real transparent brand. Well, what does that mean? That, and that to me means having integrity in, in what you're doing, how you're running your business, how you're conducting yourself against, you know, against the field and, and really just, um, you know, doing what's right. If we, if we really think about like a lot of times we'll, you know, we'll get into it with retailers or distributors or whatever in terms of margins or pricing and promotions and all that. But the, at the end of the day, these are dogs and cats that we're, we're trying to make them healthier. Right. And so the goal of everybody in our industry should be to, to get better and better food to more and more dogs and cats. And I wish if everybody had that mindset, um, I think we'd even be growing faster than we are today. The, listening to you sound like a kindred spirit. I don't know what you were feeling like during those, those moments where you, this, you learned this was the new normal. Um, the, something happened at a certain point for me where I would wake up in the mornings and go, okay, this is the new normal. And, and I would imagine doing repeat 200 butterflies. And I'm like, today's going to be repeat 200 butterflies all day long. And, but what really kind of pissed me off was the fact that it's like, I didn't expect it to be so emotionally exhausting because it wasn't, we did the workout in the morning and it was tough and it was over. It's like, okay, we're going to do this eight, 12, 16 hours today. Um, did you have those? When were those years for new low? Oh boy. Well, are those, they still happening now? <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, I, I think it's a continuum. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the answer is yes. I mean, they have, they happen. I think they're going to continue to happen because, because of the, you know, the level of growth, we're, like, we're not growing at, you know, five, six percent, we're growing at 40, 50 percent. So, you know, it's, it is, um, it is a sprint and a marathon. Um, and so I know exactly, I know exactly what you're saying, because I, and, and this is a true story, but when I, I had a, um, when I was graduating uh, high school, my, my senior year, Mark left, and we got a coach that came in from Germantown Academy. And, he was, boy, he was a, he was talking about yardage. That's what we did. And, and I remember Chris making me do a 10 by 400 meter fly set along with a silver medalist, um, Sue Heon, and she was next to me and we did this set and it nearly killed me. But I think there, you know, what was making me laugh is I, I often think of that um, sometimes when I have days like that, where I've just been like, but you know, I guess it's this ability to persevere. You can you can survive things like that. You can survive a lot of this stuff nipping at your heels, and you know, and put it in perspective. Um, and that's and that's what I try to do. I, I mean, it, it's gonna it comes at you, and the bigger you are, the bigger your problems are, and um, your opportunities are just as big. So um, so I think it's uh, you know, it never never quite gets easy, but um, but I think our training certainly helps us along the way. That's what I was hoping for. I was hoping that when, mm. thank you for uh, sharing us a little narrative there when it comes to perseverance, goal setting, showing up, uh, disdain for mediocrity. I understand. The, uh, 
the interesting thing about, about swimming is that it, it is so very honest. There's no lying in swimming. You can't lie. It's all in the water. It's all there. You either did the work or you didn't do the work. And what's interesting about your business is that you have, you know, you seems like you, you went back to your community and you went, okay, this is my home base. I know this sport. And you started working with, you started reaching out and working with athletes. And, and frankly, you, you have so many official and unofficial relationships with, with titans in our sport that I can, I can frankly, I can keep up with it. It's just, I assume everybody is, is everyone, if you've got Olympic medals, you're eating Nulo, right? Um, can you give us a little background on how that started and, and who you're working with? Yeah, so back back early on, I'd say like twenty, the, the earliest days of Nula. I mean, I, what I what I found myself doing was was competing a lot on science, and and so like I would we would go to pet expos and things like that. We would we would start to talk about you know the merits of our food and the fact that we're high meat, low carb, low glycemic. We have this patented probiotic that's spore based. Yada yada yada. Like people start to glaze over it, quite frankly, and. And, you know, you have companies that make chocolate and candy out there saying, oh, well, me too. Like, we make great food also, right? So consumers get really confused when you start competing on science because there are actually brands out there that have science in their name. And, and you know, it just, it's just a tough way to go. So, so there I was one day. I was swimming in 2013. I was at Masters. I was swimming with Aaron, who you mentioned earlier. And, you know, after workout, Aaron Pearsall came up to me and said, like, you know, Hey, I understand you're in the pet food business. I just got, um, you know, my dog Judo has been really struggling with, with his food lately. I wonder if you had any recommendations. So I just, I started, you know, doing what I did. And I started talking to Aaron about like, I meat, low carb, low glycemic and all that. And, and then the probiotic and, you know, thinking, you know, there he's going to glaze over. But, but rather than that, like he looked at me and he just, he said, yeah, that's how I think about my own diet. So it makes total sense. And that's when sort of a light bulb went off where, you know, I find myself talking to an athlete who, yeah, we understand high meat, low carb, low glycemic. We understand the structure of, of how that great nutrition and, what, and how it translates to performance, whether it's in the pool or on the track. Um, and so, at the, you know, after that conversation with Aaron, he converted judo to Nula right then. And after that conversation, I, I decided to do a, we did a really cool video. It's still on our website today, but it's, it was our very first inspirational video. And rather than sort of continue down the path of trying to shame people into feeding better food, right? Which is, if you think about it, it's what all pet food companies do. Like, no, you know, know this, know that. Like, they're, they're always trying to take that approach of, you know, shaming people or comparing against other food. And we decided to flip that on its head because we had an opportunity here to, like, to really inspire people, like, to think about what they're putting in their pet's body. And Aaron did a really great job with that video with judo and and um and it really led us to start cultivating other and new relationships and and to really focus i mean you know, on the swing community side we worked with natalie coglin for a while with um shira and dozer and then of course ricky barons who's uh with dixie and dana balmer and mally michael phelps um with juno and legend and michael actually joined um nulo as an investor in 2018 um you know, we, we work closely with, with them and, and, and we also had some informal ambassadors say like, we have some great friends in the swimming community who have pets that have been feeding Nulo that love us. And we, you know, we thank our folks like Matt Grievers and Jessica Hardy, Elizabeth Beisel, Bria Larson, Ian, who of course that we mentioned, Ian Crocker, who's a big cat dad. Um, you know, those folks are, you know, have been really instrumental in within the swimming community of helping to educate, um, who we are, what we're about. Um, but along that same line, like we didn't just really stop at swimming. We, we started to at some point have a lot of different athletes and agents. And I used to joke with people, sometimes I feel like a sports agent some days because I get a lot of athletes um, and their representatives calling, wanting to be part of what we're doing. And what we're doing is really, um, you know, we're, we're, we're inspiring people to feed better food and we're doing it as a mission to be better advocates for dogs and cats. And, you know, and so we partnered in a whole bunch of different sports verticals. So swimming, of course, being the first, and then track and field, triathlons, gymnastics, tennis, skiing. Uh, we've done ice skating, hockey, even pro football. Um, you know, we just actually secured very recently a new partnership that we'll be launching in 2020 with Adam Krikorian, who's, um, if you guys know, he's the two-time Olympic water polo gold medal coach. Um, and he 
assures me they're going to win again in 2021. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, along with Adam, we're also going to be working with USA Water Polo um, as well in 2021 as a sponsor and supporter. So, you know, what we found basically um, is that working with the right people, the right organizations, we're able to kind of go into these various, I call them sports verticals, and we're able to, again, show up and be relevant with people that they admire and respect that are telling them their story about Nulo and how it changed the life of their dog or cat. And those are really powerful stories and relationships that have worked really well for us over the years. It's a, um, I just know that when you have the right pet food, your, uh, and, and we've been on new love for a while. It's, it seems like the disposition of, of honey badger, Tucker, Ruby, it's, uh, they've got bounce and when they chill, they chill and their disposition, just, it's, it's, uh, their overall mood improves. And that's, you know, in, until you try it, you don't know, but I know this, it seems in swimming folks are super loyal. And I know when it comes to when you find something you love, uh, like you find the right pet food, you stay with it for years. Um, how has how has COVID impacted your industry? Because I have a feeling that it hasn't been too much. Because no, it's like the first you're not going to sacrifice. You're not going to sacrifice for your pets. It's correct. Um, well, fortunately, pets continue to eat, um, but it's a very the entire thing is a very unfortunate situation. But the pet industry, you know, it's one of those essential businesses where um, you know, we experienced early on um, a huge pantry surge. So, you know, gosh, end of March was super fun, but it was, um, you know, it was also a very stressful time where producers and, um, you know, freight companies, all this were, were scrambling to try to meet demand of, of this pantry load that came in at the beginning, um, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and then, you know, what happened after that was not a surprise. I kept warning people that, you know, there was going to be a hangover. And it, sure enough, it came in May and June and, and part of uh, July where people had purchased, you know, anywhere up for two to three months of pet food. So, so the, you know, there was a very scary period for a lot of people and a lot of companies that couldn't really sustain, you know, a lack of orders completely. We've never really seen anything like this where there was a surge and then a complete, um, complete pullback. Um, fortunately for us, I think a lot of what happened during this period was a lot of folks went online. So, you know, we're carried on Chewy and Amazon and our, you know, our online business really, um, really surged as a result of people wanting to stay at home and find solutions to get their pets food delivered to their door. And so we, you know, while we saw the pullback, we saw a quick recovery um, for folks that were doing that and and also for our neighborhood independent stores who like we really really cherish these these guys because they are so instrumental in having conversations and educating people about these foods that there, there's really no replacement for these neighborhood pet stores I mean they are they are so vital and essential and, and we all really feel for them because um, we need to support them and be in the stores and um, you know we hope that they continue to be viable because they're they do a really good service in terms of educating like you mentioned Tomlinson's before with great people great retailer but also very you know committed to understanding nutrition and and, um, and talking openly and honestly with with pet parents so you know you can't believe everything you read online I know that's shocking but um, so it's a little bit scary if more and more shift online. I, I really hope that we see a bit of a swing back to brick and mortar retail because uh, you know, those retailers really need everybody right now. If you're listening and you, you're, you know, you're not familiar with Nula, you're not familiar with this brand and you're like, hey, you know what, this guy's a swimmer. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try this. Um, you know, go to Nulo, go to N-U-L-O.com, check them out. Is there, is there another place where you like folks to go? Um, yeah, there, there's so that's a great link. And Nulo, by the way, is nutrition meets love. It's a portmanteau. So if you have trouble remembering Nulo, it's nutrition and love because we always say those are the two most important things that pets need. And, um, and so Nulo.com has a lot of information. You can go to our community, see our ambassadors. But if you go to Nulo.com backslash facts, um, if you want to learn about pet food and some of the things I've been talking about, um, it's a quick sort of uh, education about pet food, pet industry. So you can 
help you kind of discern a little bit about what you're looking at when you're reading pet foods, et cetera. So um, hopefully that will be another important link. I, I, I don't want to ask you a too, super tough question, but what, what's the future of Nulo? Well, I, gosh, it's, you know, it's, uh, I take it season by season. How's that? <laughs> and I know as a swimmer, you get that, but it's, it's, um, it's, you know, we're looking at the 21 season right now and we've got a lot of opportunity. We have begun expansion internationally. So we're in six, six different countries now. And, um, you know, we're, we used to, you know, I have a saying that I was trying to instill in my team, which is go slow to go fast. And so we are, we are enjoying growth rates that are double our closest competitors in the pet specialty space right now. Um, that growth is very, very um, exciting and exhilarating. And we're going to, we want to continue to fuel that growth, but also look for some other opportunities internationally and, um, and even, you know, domestically where we see room to grow and add new products and new categories and, you know, continue to move, more and more upstream. We've got things like freeze dried raw products. We've got bone broths. We've got meat and pouches. We've got lots of really cool things that pair with kibble. I mean, kibble is just a base now. I mean, there's so many ways to, to enhance your pet's food and engage more at mealtime that that's, that's kind of the direction we're moving. So we're, we're getting more space. We're doing more exciting things. We're innovating food products. Um, we're expanding internationally. So, you know, boy, I think we got a lot on our plate for 21 and then we'll see what happens from there. All right, we're going to nerd it up as we close out. Do you have a favorite go-to master's practice? Is there is there a set? Is there something that you know? This it's like that was the perfect day for me, Ian. Well, let's see, a perfect set. I don't know. We generally we generally do around three thousand meters. Um, the good thing is he kind of mixes it up. But what I I like when he does. Kind of the shorter sets where you do, for example, like we'll do, um, we'll do some maybe like three one fifties where the back half seventy five might be alternating backstroke and free, and then you add on you know some seventy fives, um, I am order, and then you repeat it like three or four times. So I like those where you kind of do a smaller set but with a with a multiple repeat on it because they go by. I don't know why they go by really fast, and you can find yourself doing a you know, 12 or 1500 meter set, like in no time. So, um, but he's really good at that. And we do, you know, we, we also like, he encourages us in a lot of our workouts to think of our, our strokes. I mean, it's, it's kind of going back to the fundamentals and we don't, you know, spend a ton of time on that, but he's really, like I said, like, even when I swim my own, if I go to the club on like on the weekend, I think about my push ups. I think about, you know, my arm position, all that because of Ian. So, um, so those are, you know, those are good things that come from his workouts too. What's the value of swimming when you're, when you're in a high pressure situation, when you're the CEO yeah, of a company, what, what, what is the, is it, is it physical? Is it vanity? Do you looking in the mirror and going, I look good or is it the, <laughs> or is the mental health? Is it the mental That's health? the case. Like I need more work, but I need more workouts. But um, no, I, I think uh, that's a great question. I, you know, I used to, there were, there were years um, where, I used to think to myself like, oh, I don't have time to swim. I don't have time to swim today. I can't find the time. I got to keep working. I got to work through lunch. You know, but, but what I really found over the years is that making the time, like I usually skip out for 12 to one workout. Um, but if I, look, if I have to come in a half hour early and, and then, I, and then I'm, and I'm able to go swim, it really clears my head. And so I think it's much more, at least at this point, you know, in my life, it's much more of a, a mental cleanse for me. And, and, and I actually, I think about some of our brand campaigns and some of the tactics that we're doing. And a lot of, a lot of the cool things we come up with, I think about during swim practice. So, um, so I really think it's an important part to sort of build that in because it's not just a time suck. It actually gives me time back every day because I get a lot done thinking as I'm swimming. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.